Spirit, I do thank you for tonight. Uh, I thank you. I thank you that our first informational meeting came with um, unintended invitees. I thank specifically to Katie at that round table in Placerville. I thank you that our second uh, launch team informational meeting came with us recognizing the bullpen wasn't going to be big enough and we had to move locations. I thank you that this one has come with um, needing more food. And I just thank you because we know that your provision is always there. That as we have plans and as we make them, that you tend to operate on a, on a different agenda, your agenda. And so we just want to submit tonight to you um, all of our agenda, all of our plans, um, all the things that we do believe that you've written that we want to follow faithfully. Um, we're excited for what you're up to. And so would you help us in our faithfulness? Would you help us be more faithful? Um, would you show us what we're supposed to do? Would you be clear as fire as cloud? Would you help us to be faithful and follow you? So we ask that spirit for your glory, for our joy, and really for the good of people that don't yet know you that live in this possible region we pray. Everybody say. All right. Um, John, I'm going to give you my answer more. All right. <laughs> Alright, so I, I'm a little fired up, and so part of this is, I got a note from someone on our launch team, uh, his name was, was Casey, uh, he was on our launch team when we launched this church four and a half years ago, and uh, he actually has moved away, but he sent me a picture of the Facebook post this week that said, you always told us there were going to be future launch teams, um, and, and there is, and I'm just so bummed that I can't be there, because um, Casey was on the launch team. And if you were on the launch team, which I'm looking around and there's nobody other than me, so you'll just take my word for it. Um, but it was just an, an incredible journey of watching God do what only God could do. And that's what we're anticipating in this journey as well. Um, so we do have plans. We're going to talk about them tonight. We're going to dream. We're going to brainstorm. We're going to pray. Uh, but my promise is that we're going to surrender to whatever the Spirit has for us and be very, very faithful to that. And so um, I'm excited about that because there's a whole bunch of things that we do know today that we didn't know a couple months ago, but there's also a ton of things that we don't know. Thank you. Um, what we do know is that my son is amazing. Carson, so, um, double cheese, double double, yeah, he's the man. Um, Carson, if you've not met Carson yet, he's the one that told me, I think about a year ago, was this right, Carson, that I had two years left to be the pastor of Vintage. Um, because he was taking over in two years. So, um, so I can be free to go back to So, um, anyway, so that, that's definitely in the game plan. Um, so there's just an excitement. Um, part of that is something that I call, it was a phrase that I coined on the first launch team that we're going to use in this one too, that I call the good old days. Um, and by good old days, we will look back at this day. We'll look back at, thank you, sir. We'll look back at, at other gatherings and meetings, and there's going to be things that are going to happen that we're going to be like, do you remember when? And so one of our very first launch team gatherings, and again, it's videotaped, I forgot. Um, and so if you're watching on video, I at least know Dave Schaefer, you are welcome to our meeting virtually. Um, but there was a moment in one of our launch teams where literally they, we had kids above us, and they were bouncing so high doing kids ministry above us as a launch team that the chandelier shattered in the middle of worship. And I just, being the, the wannabe Pentecostal that I am, I was like, that's the spirit of God. Like, clearly, with chandelier shattered. Um, it wasn't, it was just our kids. Um, our kids. Um, but again, there's just going to be things that are going to happen. Things that we're going to be praying about, things that will be different. Um, some of those things at, at Vintage in this context look like everything from, from really, really reduced office space. We were praying, we're like, Lord, we want space, and God provided. Um, praying for free property. Um, our elders from the very beginning, uh, they never mocked me because they're men of faith. Uh, some of our leadership team, some of our staff mocked me, and they were like, look, you keep saying God's going to provide it in this way. I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like if we want to plant churches, it's going to be a lot easier if we have free property than if we're married to a mortgage. Um, and God did that through a, a church that came to us, a Cornerstone Christian Church. And that's really what allows us to continue to give generously in places like Del Paso Heights or Nevada City. I really do know where Nevada City is, by the way, but I'm just trying to make fun of myself. Um, or in Oak Park, and now in Fosterville as well. It's trying to invest our time and our treasure and our talent that way as a church for more joy for the community of faith. So I'm just excited. I'm excited for the unknown. Um, how many of you guys love unknowns and that makes you excited? Raise your hand. How many of you guys hate unknowns and that terrifies you? Oh, and you're married together. I love it. The, the couples here that are married. Like, that is fun for me to watch. Um, and so Jen and I are pretty adventurous. Um, she, she's not here because she's off doing what she does, loving kids and, and those kind of things. But being a part of the first launch team was the best decision we ever made. And so I'm not here to give you a sales pitch. I'm really assuming that if you're here, you're in until you tell us otherwise. And, and that's fine. Feel zero pressure. We're just excited for where God's going to take us. Um, and right now it feels like he's spoken pretty clearly to us over the last couple of, uh, of year, last year particularly, he's taken us to Plasma. So I want to start with that first handout. It's called The Milestones. 
And I want to kind of walk through that a little bit. Um, but just that page. There is two signs. Don't turn it over. It's where we're challenging your discipline and those kind of things. So we're going to start with the milestones. And this is a document that I work with all of our church planners on, which is trying to say, okay, what is this going to look like potentially? Again, I, I'm not kidding when I talk about writing all of our plans in pencil. We need some more handouts, it looks like. There's some extras right here. Perfect. Um, and so milestones, just as we look into the future, where do we think God might take us? And these are some things that we're praying about, that we're anticipating. Right now, we're in very much a planning phase. Um, we were in kind of like a pre-planning phase for the last six months to a year, really just praying and saying, God, do you want, do you want us to do this? Because we don't want to do anything you don't want us to do. Um, and so right now, we're praying and we're planning specifically place and people. Um, who knows where Vintage Placer is going to meet next year? Anybody? Because I'd love to know. So I'm open because um, I don't know. Uh, and so we are praying. Um, Plaster will. No, I love it, right? In fact, I think that was, I think that was my joke last time. Man. But I don't know, right? And I'm good with that. Our fifth value as a church is embracing inevitable tensions. Um, and so when you step out in faith and say, okay, God, you're leading, we're going to go, um, we don't know. We have to be okay with that. But make no mistake, we are also praying about it diligently to say, Lord, where do you want us to meet? Uh, when we gather, where will that be? Um, also, who, who's going to be involved? And so tonight's a big deal because tonight's our very first gathering. It's our very first launch team. I would consider this the church. The average church in America is about 75 people. Um, I have no idea where our head count is. Terry, what's our RSVPs? 36? It's not 36. It feels like more than 36. So let's yeah. say 37. 40. Um, 40. Um, so, so, yeah, and we've got obviously some babies, some people sick, and some people watching. And so the, those numbers, the 4, the 12, the 30, that's the people we've been praying for for a year. Four is four part-time kind of roles that we're looking for. Um, and so we've got some, some worship, kids, groups, care. Um, we don't want to launch a church if we actually can't care for our church and actually have a, a, a system and a structure kind of set up to disciple people that then make disciples. Um, and so that's been a big part, and that will be a big part of our planning. Um, by the grace of God, we feel like we've made a lot of progress in the four and the 12. The 30 is something that after tonight I think we'll know a little more of. of Who's really who's really committed to launching this church? Um, with all the unknowns, um, after tonight we'll know a little bit more about that. So consider tonight kind of you know when you go to a gym membership and you get like the first workout for free, right? Um, that's what tonight is. Um, but after this, it's like it's game time. We, we've got we got work to do because I keep every time I go to class, I meet someone that doesn't love Jesus yet. And you'll hear me talk in that context. I'm very much an eternal optimist. I'm a pre-believer guy. I'm a yet to believe. Um, I believe that the gospel is compelling and it changes lives and actually has changed the world. And so that's really what we're after, is we want to be a part of what God's already doing um, and inviting us into. And so, so those are those numbers, and so that's where we are in May and June. We're trying to solidify um, who's a part, who, who is Vintage Placerville, um, where are we going to be? We're praying about that. Our prayer watch lists are going to start forming. Um, that's a, a part that is on your sheet right now. Uh, we have a very, what I would call, an active style of evangelism at Vintage Grace. I think that we naturally share what we care about. Um, which is why on Facebook we see a lot of pictures of our kids and we see a lot of pictures of work and a lot of pictures of the Warriors. Is anybody taking the game, by the way? Or are you like the extra, extra committed to it? No one's taping it? Because we were kicking butt the last time I checked. I was going to say that I was taping it. Well, we're taping it. No, one big thing. Plasma isn't as big into sport as... Yeah. Got it. Thank and, uh, you. That, that's good that's to know. That's one big... So, um, <laughs> so I'm going to have to learn a little bit more. So, um... And so, so that's, when we look at our prayer watch list, what I mean is there's people in your life already that God already has there. When we're talking about launching Vintage Classical, we're not tar talking about anything other than just loving our neighbors intentionally, on purpose, being active, and we're praying and watching. 938 is a prayer that we have, and it's in the context of Matthew chapter 938, where Jesus says the harvest is what? Anybody know? Wonderful. But the laborers are, and so our desire is that would never be true of you and me. That we would always be living on mission. The church would never be something that we do, but it's rather who God's called us to be in the communitas. And, and I'm excited to be launching our Act series at the same time we're launching and pursuing our classical campus because I feel like those have to be one and the same. You can't preach about Acts unless you're actually going to go act, you're actually going to go do something. Um, and so our pray watch lists have already been forming. We're going to pull that apart more later, but it's people that God has for us. Um, the gal that I pray for more than any other person in Plasville is Katie. I haven't seen her since the time I met her at Roundtable. Uh, but I just continue. Every time I'm there, I meet someone new. Um, we also have a go list, which Central is working on. 
Uh, just for a conversational piece, we're calling this Central um, because it's a place where our kids ministry is coming with what are the list of things that we need to launch a campus, worship ministry, teams, all that kind of stuff, um, preaching team. And then also in May and June, we're going to have our first life group um, gathering and, and practice. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. We're going to be really flexible. We'll really pull out calendars tonight and try to nail some of those dates down. Going into the summer, though, we're going to be preparing, uh, preparing our hearts, preparing all of these sorts of things. What does it look like for us to take these next steps as God is leading our plans uh, as we pray open-handed? Uh, we're going to have our second life group gathering, practicing that. What is a life group? We'll kind of pull that apart in a second. Um, we're also going to start throwing pray watch parties. Um, and then there's two lines that are on purpose. Prayer watch parties, personal, which is just, just you guys. You guys throwing parties. I think it's one of the best ways that we can actually reach out to our neighbors is by throwing them a party, not by inviting them to church. I'm a fan of you inviting your family and friends to church. I'm not against that at all. But I think the best front door of the church is your front door. It's not come here. Jesus was never a come and see leader, was he? He was always a go and be leader. He went to people. He went and met the woman at the well. He went and spent time with people who were far from him. And he came for people that didn't actually want to go to church. That's who he came for. In fact, the only accusation of Jesus that was true, if you really look at, at all the accusations of Jesus, is that he was a friend of sinners. And so my prayer is that God has in this room friends of sinners. That there are people on our prayer watches in our life that they go, man, I love Max. I don't know why I love Max. I just love Max. Now, I think it's because of Jesus in Max. But that, that, that we, are, we have a reputation. Um, I bought everyone a book. Uh, do you have those, Taylor? Yes, I do. And so Taylor's going to walk around. If you've not met Taylor yet, um, she serves in a variety of roles around here, but <laughs> one of them is, is our classroom will lead with me, um, just making sure that all these details get taken care of, because the details are left up to me, they don't get done. Um, and so I, I bought a book for everybody. So as a family unit, just raise your hand. Um, I, I, I've only got 21, so we'll make sure that it's just per family unit. If you already got one, at a, uh, we had a service a while ago, we passed these out as well. But I'm going to ask you guys, as part of the launch team, is to throw a party for Jesus without actually feeling like you have to preach at your party. Just throw a party. And Hugh Halter is a friend of mine. Um, he, he's a nationwide renowned speaker. Um, but he calls it happy hour. Um, and part of what it is is just the sacrament of party. It, Jesus faithfully went to parties. He met at parties. He invited people to parties. Levi is one of my favorite stories of conversion, right? And Levi, when he comes to faith, what does he do after he comes to faith and meets Jesus? Anybody know? Throws a party. He literally calls all his packages and other buddies together. He says, come meet Jesus. Let's have a party. And so sometimes we need step by step, like, well, how do I throw a party without preaching? How do I throw a party? Like, what's the goal? What's the objective? The story that I told today of one of my prayer watch guys, that was like a four-year story in the making. He's been to Vintage Grace before. He's come. But he hasn't been ready to actually have a meaningful gospel conversation yet. And he knows I'm open. He knows I want to. He knows it's what I think is best for him. But I'm not preaching. I'm not pushing it down his throat. But we're very, very intentional. And part of why we say we pray and we watch is because who is the one that removes the scales from our eyes? Jesus. It's the Lord. We can't save anybody. We're dead in our sin according to Paul and Ephesians. We need God to work. And so we're praying to God because he's the one that has to move in the hearts of these individuals. And so we're praying and we're watching for opportunities. Like when we get the text message that says, hey, I need a friend. Like that, that's like the ding, ding, ding. Like this is a chance to engage with someone and have a gospel opportunity. And so throwing parties is something we're going to do this summer together. Now, how many of you guys, don't lie, this is, this is kind of church, right? Like don't lie church. How many of you guys throwing a party like for Jesus sounds very intimidating? Anybody? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being honest. How many of you guys are like, I've never thrown a party for Jesus, but I want to. Anybody? Like, again, this is part of that launch team. Like, we're going to press each other a little bit. We're going to stretch it. We're going to look at the Bible, not just as information, but transformational. Like, this is what it means to follow Jesus. This is why the disciples, I think, the gospel explorer, they're like, wait, Jesus trained us for three years, and now we're supposed to go do this? I think way too much of our education happens inside a classroom. It happens at seminar. I love Biola. I taught there, right? We have a lot of students going there. I'm a huge fan. But we got to get out of Biola. We gotta get out into not the classroom, but into to the rec room, into the courtroom, into the on the street, into round table, into these different places. Um, and so we're gonna have pray watch parties that we're literally gonna pray for you guys. We'll even help fund them on some level. Like we'll pay you to throw a party. Um, just to start to practice what does it look like to love my neighbors on mission. And we'll do that individually and we'll also do it as a team. And so we'll do sometimes where it's like, and trust me, it's always way better when we do it together. And what I mean by that is we'll ask another neighbor, we'll ask someone else on our team. And one of the best parts of our pray watch mentality is this. You are not alone when you're praying for pre-believers in your neighborhood, at your jobs, in your soccer team. 
I'm never, I'm, I'm, I'm almost never amazed anymore, but it happens all the time. When I have someone on my prayer watch and all of a sudden Zach's like, hey, I was praying for my friend so-and-so, and I'm like, I know so-and-so, we're really tight, we go to what and what, right? Like, there's this overlap that happens, and this is another reason why we want to launch camps in Fosterville. That overlap happens a lot more frequently when you're in the same geographical region, right? It's harder when you're, you're all over the place. And so that's part of the game why we think worshiping in your community is, is so important. And so we're going to have prayer watch parties that you're going to throw. We're going to have prayer watch parties that we're going to throw together. Um, and that's going to be really a big emphasis in the summer. Going to October and February, this is when it gets really, really confusing. And so if you're a planner and you want to know the answers and the when and the where and the what and the why, like this is going to drive you nuts. Are you ready? Because I'm a planner. So it's driving me nuts. But we don't know what this is going to look like. Here's what we know. We're going to be practicing to launch Sunday services at some point. First round of swag would be like the Holy Spirit keychain. We're going to have vintage Placerville swag. Um, T-shirts, things that, that just communicate hopefully who we are. Now, one of the things you'll notice if you've been around vintage at all is our swag doesn't always appear the way that you would think it would appear. Like our vintage grace theme shirt. Anybody know what our vintage grace theme shirt is? Desperate, desperate independent, right? It's not usually if you're like, I want to invite you to my church. We're desperate independent people, right? <laughs> but we actually think that's the best way that we can lead in the gospel is in our desperation, in our dependency on Jesus. And so that will develop over time. Uh, we have a team that works on those kind of things. We'll have our first round of life groups. Um, life groups are what I would call home churches. Um, I think we grow small. We don't grow big. I love Sunday gatherings, um, but we don't grow in big gatherings. Sundays are fun because it's like a rally. The big joke is at the end of every sending, I always clap. Because it does feel like I'm, I'm breaking the huddle with the sports team. And so I clap because we're going. We're going on to the mission field. We're going to be the living proof and loving God. But I think we grow in our ongoing spiritual transformation best in small groups. Best in one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, as couples. We do all of our life groups as couples. We don't necessarily emphasize a men's or a women's ministry. Um, we're not against them. We have them at Vintage. But we start with life groups. Because what I don't is I don't want the husband growing this way and the wife growing this way. We're not actually growing together. Uh, we have blended groups, singles or with couples, and, and life stage diversity, all that kind of stuff. And we have four different life group leaders right now that we're training that are going to be part of our classroom campus, many of which are, are in the room right now. So we'll be launching those life groups hopefully in the fall. We'll have different events like block parties. We'll have different services. You can see Joy and Jesus is a sermon that I, I think we're going to preach in November. It could move to January or February depending on how things are going. Um, we'll probably send out a mass mailer. I still don't think mass mailers are as effective as personal invites. But I actually think Jesus uses mass mailers too. Um, we're not against them. They're not of the devil. Um, like I still have people that I've met multiple times where they're like, yeah, how'd you hear about vintage class? And they're like, well, I, I got that mail. Often an invite to church is often not for the service that you think it is. We say this all the time. If you invite someone to Christmas, you're actually really inviting them to Easter next year. You just don't know. Um, so it's a touch point. And so mass mail is a touch point. The best touch point in our lives is our lives. The best sermon that is ever preached is not from a pulpit. It's, it's you. Living out as the living proof of the loving God. And so that October to February is a very loose kind of mock of what it might look like if we were building towards a March grand opening. And so you kind of see those dates, November and December. Um, we practice something called a, a W. And again, I think churches get in trouble when they're too much of a business and when they're not enough of a business. When they're too strategized and when they're not strategized enough, right? Like, I think the Holy Spirit's with me at Starbucks on Monday morning when I write my sermons. And on Wednesday is when I finish writing them. Um, but that being said, every sermon this week, um, every single sermon was different this week. That's that. He was here. All three of them were different. And I think we want to be open-handed what the Holy Spirit has for us. And so there are times, literally, that there are different messages where God is leading us. And so we want to be very flexed in that approach. Um, and so this would be like, if we were launching on March 17th, this would be some of the things that we could expect. We'll nail down dates and calendars in just a second. But I'm giving you kind of the 40,000-foot view, right? This is the broad view of what we think the next six months to a year will look like. And then at the bottom, it says March through September, grand opening, March 17th or September 15th. Mm -hmm. Oh, by then we have four life groups because, again, we grow small. So we actually want the church to be multiplying on a micro level right away before we ever, quote, unquote, launch the church. Because practically speaking, the church is a celebration service on Sundays of what God's doing Monday through Saturday. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We actually don't think church is on Sunday. Um, there's a celebration that happens on Sunday. We break bread. We have communion, we have celebration of baptism, we sing songs, we do four things every Sunday. Um, in fact, you know what? I don't have any gift cards at all. I get gift cards so I know that they work. But we sing songs, we tell stories, um, we have sermons, and we send our people to the living proof of love of God. So we do those four S's essentially every Sunday. Um, and so those are great things. I love it. It's still my favorite day of the week. But honestly, like I love hanging out with Sean Wheeler on Monday, my, my trainer. I love hanging out with Jared, my coach, on Tuesdays. And we all have those same people. 
our lives. And so the church on many levels, because the question right now that all we have is, wait, wait, so Jerome, I'm confused. When do we start? Right? Like, who, who's, who's thinking that? Don't lie. Who's thinking when do we start? Come on. I need thinking that. You probably don't even think that. You don't even, you're just like, where's the cloud? Let's go. I know you. Probably. But I think it's easy for us to say, when do we start? And the reality is today, like right now, like this is the start. Um, the reality is just like we were preparing for Acts the last three years, we don't even know what God's preparing us for. So I'm asking you to flip that paper over real quick. And I, I am trying to go fast to make up on some time here. But I would say today, 520 is our first official launch team gathering. This is the first beginning of the church. Um, this is what we're going to You're going to start seeing our launch team. We'll start to practice those four S's on some level. Um, we already had it, all of them to take place at the service that most of us were just at. But this is our first time. It's going to be pray watch focused. And like I said, we're going to get there in a second. You got your cards and ask you to fill those out. Um, those aren't things you're going to turn in. Those are for you. Um, I need physical handholds. I need touch points. I need things that will help me. I set alarms. Um, really, anything we do as a church, it's because Drew needs it, right? Like, Drew needs to be reminded that the kingdom matters more than the warriors. Drew needs to be reminded that when he goes to Totem, that there's people that are there. Um, I had a very cool thing happen a, a couple of weeks ago. I've been going to Totem pretty regularly. It's just become one of my prayer watch class serial communities. And so I just go there and I write my sermons there. It's just a way for me to plant myself in one place and, and get to know people. And a gentleman came up and he said, I've seen you. You come in, you know, every Monday. You keep coming in and, I, and I've seen you. Um, and every time you get up and you leave, because they get really crowded at certain times, right? And it's been pouring. We've got some good rain this year. And, and, and he just said, I feel like just every time it's pouring, you get up and you go walk outside. Like, and this was the line. Humans don't do that. <laughs> and he's like, why do you keep doing that? And I, and I kind of, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to talk about Jesus. Where as it sounds, like I hate telling people I'm a pastor. Because I instantly get like the wall, right? And so I was like, well, you know, I just, I got some work stuff up here. So I always say work, right? I got some work stuff up here. And I just, again, she had a kid. And he's like, yeah, but you've done it like multiple times. Um, I'm like, I, I want your business to be successful. And um, he's like, that, that's cool. Uh, you go, How'd you hear about us? I said, well, my buddy Kirk goes here. And he goes, oh, uh, oh, uh, I get it. And, and again, it was cool because he's like, I know Kirk. I love Kirk. And so all of a sudden, our pray watch lists are overlapping, right? He knows the guy. I know the guy. I find out that the owner of Tone, actually one of his best buddies growing up, goes to church here at Vintage Grace. And so we start talking. He's like, you're with Vintage Grace. I get it now. That's why you go outside. And he goes, there's something else that you're working on. And it wasn't mean or scandalous. It was just like, that's cool. That's cool. You, humans don't do that. That's the line that I'm going to remember. Humans don't do that. I'm like, cool. I love that. Because Jesus is doing a kingdom world, not an empire world. That was just very, very neat. But we're going to be thinking that way in the context of our pray watch list. And so our gatherings are, are going. As of May 20th, I consider we're off to the races. Um, June, you'll see, I wrote the word flexible for June and August. Um, I want to highlight the July and September dates right now because those are dates that are not flexible. Um, so again, if you're out of town, I totally get it, but I would love as a launch team for us to go to as many of these things together as possible. Um, the best way, when Jesus says, they're going to know that you're my disciples, how does he send them? Do you remember? They'll know you're my disciples by what? By the way that you love one another. Well, how do you love one another if you don't actually spend time with one another and engage together and live together and break bread together and eat ice cream cones together and, and suffer through Kirk's lactose intolerant stuff, right? Like, we have to be in it together, in it to win. And so... These dates, again, June and August, you see it's flexible. July and September, those are things that are happening at Central. Um, we offer an Elements Lunch um, pretty regularly. Uh, I think we do it about once a month. And so I just picked a date that I thought, honestly, I thought would be underattended because it's the summer and everybody's all over the place. I'm like, I want to own that for Placerville. And so I'd love if we would go together to the Elements Lunch on 17th. It's going to be after second service. Um, it requires to be a little bit flexible with our timeline. Um, September 9, 16, and 923 is partnership. And so one of the things I'm trying to do is at our launch team gatherings, when we launched Vintage Central, um, we had a lot of these meetings that took place on a video camera or with us together, but we can actually do that though they're already here. And part of it is, as we think about multiplication of systems and things like that, that's some of the stuff that we're working on. How do we make sure that we understand who is Vintage Grace? Some of you I've never even met before. Um, you got invited by a friend or a family member, and I'm glad that you're here, but you're like, I don't know this guy from Adam, other than that he loves the Warriors, and Placible doesn't love the Warriors. So, like, that's like the extent of our relationship right now, and I get that. Um, and so as we look at who has God called us to be a vintage grace, what is God doing? Um, obviously, God is, is moving here, and he's doing a work at Vintage that we can't explain. We can't take any credit for. I often use the metaphor that I feel like I grew up being a surfer, and I feel like like I got placed on a board, and God just said, stand up, and I stood up, and then there's this big swell that we're just riding. 
Um, but even that would give us way too much credit. Like, we didn't even stand up. Like, God's like, here you go, hold on tight. And even that would give us too much credit. It's like he's holding on to us. And that's what I want to happen for each and every one of us in our Pray Watch context. And so July 15th will give us the elements of who Vintage Grace is. Um, September will give us the, what does it mean to be a joyful in the faith? What does that mean theologically? What does that mean practically? You're going to be getting a lot of that in just our normal March team hangouts, uh, like living on mission and praying and watching. Um, but if you don't know what our cube is, right, that's a big deal. That's, that's a big grace. That's what it means to be a healthy disciple. A healthy disciple, we believe, is, is finding more joy in Jesus, that he's, he's living a transformed life in community, living his family in the community of the talks. We'll talk about Acts. And the third part is, is he's living on mission. Um, I grew up in a church where it's like, no, a healthy disciple meant you went to church and you gave 2% of your income and you would go to Mexico once a year. Like, that's what it meant to be a disciple. And I think that's an example of being in the kingdom, but not actually exploring and experiencing the kingdom. And so I don't want that for our church. Uh, for your joy, I don't want that. I want that radical adventure that Jesus calls his disciples on, which we're going to call Vintage Classroom. And so that's July and September. June and August, the reason we wrote Flexible there, um, we've got a team, if you've not met our team yet, Kirk Triplett's on our team, John Parker's on our team, and Casey Hilsey, where are you at? Is right here. Um, and so we've been meeting pretty faithfully. We go to Sweetie Pies, we pray over the waitresses, we, we pray and walk, um, we pray and watch, um, and again, someone's got to suffer for Jesus, Sweetie Pies, right? Like, um, so again, you can be on that Pray Watch Committee as well. Um, oh, by the way, we don't have committees. We don't ever say BBS. And we don't have committees. You said it again today. Did you? I said it was like Because vacation and Bible school should never be in a sentence. <laughs> just like, never. Like, that is a sin. Um, so, Zach has just gotten his demerit. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's demerit. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. That's what I thought. All right, you're forgiven. Um, All right, you're forgiven. And uh, we don't have committees. We yeah, don't have committees. Um, so, anyways, July, September, June, and August we won't be flexible. We currently have a couple of dates right now. 610 is the launch team party at Totem. Again, trying to know each other, 627. Uh, we want to do a midweek life group home gathering. Um, and then in August, we want to do another launch team party at Lions Park and then a life group home gathering. So, I'm going to ask our guys if they would just stand up where they are and just kind of share what we're hoping to accomplish on those days. Um, as well as what to look forward to. And if you could pull out your calendars, because now's the time we want to kind of solidify, we, that's a good date for us. Because um, if it's a bad date for everybody, then there'd be no point having a launch team gathering. Does that make sense? Um, so here you go. Here's Kurt. And I think you asked me to get some sort of gift cards I failed. I did. Like, like I did have gift cards. That's right. Sorry, we forgive this an opportunity for you to show grace. <laughs> so um, 610, uh, Pete Mitch and Totem. They have a great, if you haven't been there, they have a great courtyard right behind uh, the Carey House there. Uh, they've kind of uh, agreed to let us have it from 4 to 6 on, on 610. And we've got some tacos. They make a, a really interesting taco. And the, the reason that Pastorville isn't really into the Warriors, because they just want all teams to win. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we mostly grew up with three channels up in that area. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you were in the good. You were in the good area then. So, uh, so uh, six ten. Uh, we've already kind of got it booked, and so hopefully that works. That's kind of um, one of the the less flexible, I guess, dates of what we're going to talk about. But um, it's going to be a great time hanging out, and uh, uh, again, the, the food's covered. So um, get to come hang out in the courtyard. We'll probably have some fun stuff to do. And, and um, there's some cool guys that told him that are that are wanting Jesus. And, uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was Neil or Cameron that talked to you up there, but uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they've been in and around church for most of their life, but not currently. So I'm pretty excited to see what God does up there. So who's next? Sure, I'm Casey. Um, skipping ahead to August, either on the 4th or the 11th. It's going to be the same kind of idea, just at Lions Park. We're going to get together um, and just... I guess party and have a good time together and uh, continue to get to know each other and build this community of people that we have here. Uh, it's exciting to meet a look that far in the future. Every single meeting, I meet someone new and I'm not this today. It's been a great conversation. And so I just think, you know, another three months down the road, how many more people are we going to meet in this, in this room that I haven't met? Or how many new people are going to be added on? Um, and then there's, we might even have an opportunity to, to bless the students in the area um, with the back to school giveaway or some type of thing. But uh, I think the main idea, I think, is just to continue this community that we're building there um, as, as we move forward starting now. Do you want us to pull our calendars out now and we'll talk about this one specifically? Let's talk about the country Oh, okay. I can go for it. So uh, if you have your calendars, they're both Saturdays, the 4th and 11th. 
How many have, like, fourth is fine? The problem is that's back to school. It's back to school, school yeah, time, yeah. so we're trying to figure out so if it's really bad. Or it could be like, well, we're stuck because we're not back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, because we need to call and reserve the casino and all that fun stuff there. So, uh, Starts to six. Some people start to six. High school starts year. to six. Yeah, that's why we're. So we don't. We want to, you know, leave that weekend open for people to get all ready to go back, and then maybe after the schools, then the high school started the six. Right, what you're saying. Starts the thirteenth. Starts the thirteenth. Oh, so they're both back to school again. Awesome. Both of them start to live in there. I was trying to avoid that. Right. So both. So this is great. Doesn't matter. So. Does, does anyone like, hey, fourth is like the dumbest idea ever? <laughs> we won't offend anybody. Fourth, no. How about the 11th? Yeah. Yeah. The fourth, yes? No, maybe so? 11 is good. 11 oh, seems good. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work, 11. baby. Go on. Exactly. 11. 11? It's the 11. I like it. Done. Okay. All right, so I'm John Parker, and uh, I'm going to help kind of with the coaching of the life groups. And so as we're praying and watching, just praying, as Drew said, we, we've got a couple couples together already that are going to be either leading or co-leading groups. Uh, but be praying how God might want to cause that spiritual transformation in your life about being a leader in the future. Because obviously we want to be able to multiply groups as we grow as a, uh, a fellowship, as a communitas. Uh, but during these times... Uh, on the uh, June 27th, and I think there's three dates here, like either the 8th, 22nd, or the 29th, and we'll kind of land on those as we kind of figure out what people's schedules are. But basically the idea, actually how many of you are in a life group right now? Okay, so um, that is really where, as Drew said, that, that coming together, getting to know each other, loving one another, and living life together in such a way that as we are living up in Plasma, people are seeing that that love and connection. Uh, and we have an opportunity to invite them in uh, to love on people. So to be praying, watching, inviting people in, and then just to have some opportunities to begin to live that out in uh, life and see what that might look like on the Plasma you know, and begin to form those groups uh, to start off with. So. Uh, those are so. Here, one issue we run into: Placer Hill feels like. Again, I don't live there, so I am an outsider. So I really know nothing uh, other than praying and watching and talking to teams, and we've done demographic studies and those kind of things. But you guys are the best people because you live there; it's your home. But I keep finding a lot of people. I almost feel like Placer is more of a bedroom community than Elk Grove Hills. What I mean by that is, so many people commute, which makes life groups hard midweek because they commute. And so they're gone the whole week. Has that proven to be true? You guys stay out splash them. Um, has that proven to be true for you guys at all? Seeing people making midweek groups difficult. Because life group model is beautiful when it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, when it's, again, we, we go to church on Sunday. Our life group model is text-driven. Um, so I taught hermeneutics, which is how to read the Bible of Biola and William Jessup. Um, and so part of it, I want every one of our people to experience the word of God for themselves, be a self fear. Um, and so that, that is very much our, our life group model. And so we want you in the text, in community, so that you can be sent and to be missionaries in your community as well. Um, but that typically works really well midweek. And so the date on 627 and 822 and 829, I'm pretty sure they're Wednesday nights. Is that what we landed on? Yeah. Yeah, someone already checked. So um, we don't have to commit to anything. I'm just saying, could we commit to going to one? Um, and so maybe we just start with June. Like, but if, if, again, if a Thursday night's better than a Wednesday night, then let's not do a Wednesday night. Um, we're not going to do multiple life groups to start. We're going to do one large one. Um, and, again, we're only talking about two in the whole summer. We're not talking about consistently, consistently yet. So, like, 627 is a date. Would that work? And you can see we're trying to do things every, like, 10 days, 20 days. We're trying to have a rhythm here so that we can get some consistency. So 627, I'm seeing thumbs up. I'm seeing no thumbs down. It's a Wednesday. And I know we won't get everybody, but I at least want, again, like I said, part of what I avoid is if I'm seeing a ton of thumbs down, I'm like, forget it. Like, let's move on. So we want to shoot for Wednesday. I did see one thumbs down. Do we, would Thursday make it better? Are all you Wednesday people? 
Well, you should be careful there. But yeah, um, I'm just kidding. Mike serves in the prisons. Uh, if we shift into Thursday, 28th, do we lose those thumbs up? I know I'm not. I'm not losing any thumbs up yet. Okay, let's go 28 then. All right. 628. Now, let me tell you, this is part of why I love launch team days. We can have conversations and we can actually, honestly, I am very much, I grew up in a small country church. Like, I am the kind of pastor that likes to know everything about your cousins, dogs, uncles, sisters, mother, right? Like, that's just who I am. Um, and, and again, where I grew up, sometimes that was the same person, right? Those were the same people. So, um, that's all another story. Um, but anyways, and so as we've grown, I'm excited for me because this is going to become like one of my kind of life groups, a small thing of faith. Now, this group will grow over time, like Casey, I think, was saying. But we got lots of relationships to build here. It'll be at a time after work. What do you think? Seven? Seven, Seven eight, thirty? Too late or okay? I'm looking at young families. I go to bed at 9, so that's like, I'm up at 4.30 every morning, that's a real thing, that's when I hear from Jesus most clearly. We could do 6.30, but 7 to 8.30, 6.30 make it target for work? 7. Okay? So 7 o'clock on the 28th. And we'll communicate all this, so don't don't worry about writing stuff, but you do have pens and paper. Um, August, we already decided on the 11th, um, 22 or 29, do we want to just leave it flex and just say one of those weeks there and wait? We want to nail down better now. I'm a planner, so I'm more like, dial me in. We're looking at the 23rd or the 30th now. now we're looking at the 23rd or the 30th. You're, you're thinking we're going to have multiple groups meeting. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what our RSVP is like. Yeah. Yeah. Life groups, the dream for life groups is they're communities of 8 to 16 people. Um, once you get over 16 people, especially when you're meeting consistently, um, it makes it really hard. Like There's a subconscious of, of our humanity that says, well, I'm not needed. And again, we'll talk about all of this in our gatherings. We don't like to have eight people because if you have eight people, you get one with a sick kid and one going on a special pray watch thing, and now you're double dating faithfully. So you kind of want to avoid, I love double dates when they're on purpose, but not when they're life groups. Uh, and so you're looking, looking for eight to 16 people. Um, and, and again, like I said, this will be something that will evolve out of our launch team. For right now, what's most important is that we get to know each other. It's why you have name tags. We'll name tags a bunch. And I would encourage you, do the best that you can to not leave without meeting new people tonight. Um, and again, that, that's on me for the delay on the food there, so I'm sorry about that. It slowed us down a little bit. So, um, but again, we, we definitely get it. They're going to know where it's inside by the way we love one another. you got to get to know someone to love them. So that's just a real thing. So, what's so what do we want? 23rd or 30th? 30th. 30th. Deal. I'm easy. 30th. August 30th. And again, we'll get all this done. Taylor's taking notes. Um, I'm taking notes, Taylor, and I'm going to hand them to you, and you're going to have to interpret the hybrid with us. The Wednesdays might be better. Because Alana's sports are Tuesdays and Thursdays, usually, so maybe when school starts, Wednesday would be better. Okay. So let, let's say somewhat flex. Is that 30 group, is 29 still an option? Let's do 29 just to be safe. Okay. Yeah. And this is the whole point of being flexible. It's so easy to be flexible when we're like this. All right. And so obviously then that leads into kind of one of the big prayer requests, of course, and I just put 930 down, which would be ironic because it would be the day after 929. But 930, I pray that God will lead in such a way that we'll know, okay, what's the plan going to look like? Because, again, really by October 1st, we need to make a call for shooting for a March launch. Um, now, remember, please hear me. I, I can't say it enough. The launch of the church is already going on. If we're praying and watching, if we're praying for each other, if we're breaking bread, if we're worshiping together, that's already taking place. Um, this is actually how most churches in the world meet, um, sitting around a table, breaking bread. Um, and I would argue most of them do discipleship better than most churches in America. And so that's a real thing. And so please, when we think about church, consider that. Um, we think church is living on mission together, uplifting each other, um, and pointing each other back towards Jesus. So when we say start um, start services, that will be kind of decided around that time. Uh, and then at that point also, we're going to want to nail down our office. We will want some sort of space that says this is it. I remember when I moved here, I didn't want people to invite people to the church office in my garage. Um, so we'll have some sort of a space where we can have stuff. Um, obviously, at Vintage Center, we have a whole truckload. I mean, literally, like that's not a pun. Like, we have trucks literally ready of materials and things that we want to use. Um, but we don't know where we're going to meet, so we don't know what exactly we need yet. So that, that's kind of the, the prayer request there. Uh, but, but somewhere in Placerville proper, 
Um, we know we've got 11,000 people in the Costco region. I've been very connected with the pastors. They graciously invited me to come and speak at, what was it called? Yeah, Day of Prayer. National Day of Prayer. Um, they invited me to come and, and, and give the sermon that day. Um, they let me know the night before. And, um, and, and that's, that's possible, too. Okay, so I'm learning. I'm growing. Um, and to be honest, like, I don't get nervous preaching. And I was like, all right, Lord, what do I say like that? You know, I'm gonna talk about the Warriors and this now. So um, it was just a great, great honor to get to pray with them. But we've had lots of pastors say, "Hey, how can we support you? How can we be a part of it?" And so just the reception from these pastors has been very, very cool uh, for what God invited us to do. So that's kind of the launch team calendar. Again, we'll get that updated. Um, but the, uh, lots of prayer requests that we've already started. So what questions do you have right now? Um, again, I want to give you the forty thousand of you. I want to zoom into forty foot for a little bit, but then I also want to have some time for Q and A before we pray. Um, but Prayer, uh, your questions right now are actually prayer requests because my number one response to whatever your question is going to be, I promise, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but let's pray about that. And so, Taylor, make sure you write down any of these questions here. So, what questions do we have? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we don't know where it's going to be in the town. We're looking at like, schools in the area. Like, in the We're looking at all of that. Everything's on the table. And if you have ideas, don't leave before giving that idea to Taylor because um, we are praying and watching, <laughs> literally pray walking, um, asking God where that will be. But right now, the church meets at your home. I mean, that, that, that is the front door of the church. Yeah? What, what, what is the pastor of the church? Uh, like, like, who's going to pastor Vintage Placerville? Right now, it's going to be the, the elders and the senior leadership from Vintage. And so, if you missed our last gathering, we're going to have a preaching rotation. I'll be there once a month. We're hiring a preaching pastor right now. He'll be there once a month. Uh, Michael Dacey is our youth pastor, a very gifted communicator. He'll be there once a month, um, and we'll continue to have other rotations. Even people in this room will be a part of kind of our preaching rotation. So uh, we'll be preaching rotation. I'm actually really excited about that. It doesn't typically work in America. Um, and there's part of it that says maybe it should. Uh, I think we're too pastor-driven in the church in America. Um, it's causing lots of issues, and we're seeing it on a, on a scale across the country. So we're not opposed to hiring a full-time campus pastor. But every one of those four people, when it says four part-time, they all live in Placerville. Um, I'm not one of those people. I just happen to be the lead pastor of Vincent Grace. Yeah. So I came by way of some really unusual circumstances, Dribble, but there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of hurting um, homeless um, youth in the, on the streets of Placerville. Yeah. Um, where where my heart really kind of breaks. For those and so what's what is maybe um, the, the answer that you don't have is, yeah. um, what's the outreach yeah so I have kind of an answer to that one because we do say that every Sunday we send hundreds up to a thousand missionaries every single Sunday um, I still think the best outreach is us being the living proof of the living God and us being sent to the spirit and actually moving I'm not against organized outreach either uh, but I do think the most effective way is that for us to not walk past it without praying and watching and living and leading, extending a hand and doing something. Um, I still think that, again, one of the books that we'll, we'll pass out later that, that he wrote is called Flesh. Um, and it is the point that Jesus came and he came and lived the gospel in front of people. And that we are called to be, again, it's my words, but, but to be Jesus with skin on, is to actually be the presence of God on the streets of Placerville wherever God has us. So, again, that, that's not a way to get around actually having organized efforts, but I do think the best way is for us to be living as sent people in the power of the Holy Spirit to go to our Jerusalem. And so, so I'll tell you that, that's our, our biggest one, is that I think when we look at, at Vintage, right now our dream is to give 50% to outreach. Uh, we're 15 right now as a church, 10% um, for church planning as well. You know, and so, so we want to be a generous church, but the best way we can be generous is with our time um, and with our treasure and with our talent. And so there will be needs that will come up. Um, we have a whole system as to what that looks like as far as how do we say this is our, you know, Placerville ministry. Um, and, and that's kind of a process of saying, are they us? Are they aligned with us? Those kind of things. We have local partners as well. Um, and, yeah, so, so what you guys are doing is you're literally being Jesus to, to these, these men and, and different women. So that's what we want for every single one of us. The goal is something that Jen's working on in kids' ministry, and Dan's working on in worship ministry, and Kyle's working on in adult ministries. And so what that means is when we say go, we have everything that we need, like material wise. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to be good stewards and think through counting the costs on the front end, what do we need, and let's be honest, we're just going to steal whatever we need from the YouTube Center. Um, 
<laughs> and they don't care because they're us and that's what they want. Because they as we. Yeah. Any other questions? If you do get a place up there, like we do have here, the generous for like the homeless homes, and that way you can you know, reach out to them to have a place to come to eat, and then that way you can spend a short time as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas. You have a target um, occupy, uh, what's it called, uh, room maximum. Like, oh, we're shooting for a place that can hold 100, we're shooting for a place, for a place that can at least start maybe with 50 or 75 yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, one of the wonky things we think about church, I think church growth is from the pit of hell, but that's a whole other story, so I'm not going to go there. But there are some things we want to be wise about. Um, so part of that is when you have things like pipe and drape, you know, you want to cut rooms, you want it to feel full, and there's all sorts of things, and again, it's really not the spawn of Satan, just the, the inner Pharisee he feels like it is. But, um, but yeah, those are real things. Like trying to have a room where you could have 200 people, but you could also have 50 and not feel like you have nobody, right? Um, parking are real things and all that kind of stuff. That's part of why we love meeting in a school. Um, it also gives you an instant pray watch community, right? Like you instantly can start praying and watching for those kids and for those teachers and for, and then again, Casey's help coaching at the high school. I mean, all those kinds of things are all really, really helpful. They're just instant opportunities. Like I've done funerals at Marina and Middle School. I've done weddings, you know, and all that kind of stuff just comes from being in the community and the place. So we don't have a specific location, but yeah, I would say somewhere between, I mean, 200, think that number. Um, you can do a lot when you have a gathering space of 200 seats. Mm -hmm. um, you can cut that down, and yet you can still grow and not feel like you're instantly limited. Because um, those are just real things. Um, we want free believers to have a seat at the table. I still think the most important table is actually your dining room table. Uh, but we do like Sunday, Sunday evenings and mornings as well. But upstairs cosmic would be small. I don't know what cosmic is, so that right would be the thing talking about. Oh. <laughs> well, it's like that's like when you think central, I mean just to think of that history in that area, that'd be really cool to see that. And his brother is the owner of both. Oh cool. So that's Jacob's brother? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say well, if you have specific ideas, go ahead and write those down. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just keep praying them and we'll email them to everybody. We're not gonna like hide them. I just mean we'll email them out and we'll it's say, hey, let's keep praying about yeah. yeah, so that'd probably be pretty small for a Sunday gathering. So, so think, think two hundred. That would be the number you're kind of thinking about. And also, don't forget space for kids classrooms, um, space for kids to gather. Uh, if we say we want to be a church that's multi generational, then we want to axe out, you know, generation. And I still think one of the growing demographics in Costco is young families that are saying, "Hey, to heck with being married or mortgage and other other things. I want to actually be wise and responsible and not be dead up to my eyeballs." Um, now again, Costco is not that affordable either, for the record. Um, but yeah, we are in debt to our eyeballs. We already are in debt, exactly. It only takes so much more. And even look at our launch program. This is pretty fun. I mean, we've got young singles, we've got young marrieds, we've got babies crawling over the place, we've got babies at home. We got you know, and and I want that as a church. We actually want to have the whole gamut. Um, that that helps us reflect the kingdom of God. Um, we want to reflect the community. How many people do we need to pray for for an actual kind of team for that to be For what team? Like a church for a 30 is the number and so so if god's moving in our hearts we have 40 here today but we need 30 people are saying hey we're in like i'm, I'm not sugar going anything like it takes work and it's emotional and like satan's gonna hate what we're doing he already does like if you feel some some tension if you feel some heart if you feel some and like i already got one person <laughs> again this state this is family right this is confidential <laughs> someone said i'm in when you're up and running and I'm like, then you're not in. Like, you weenie? Like, that's not in? Like, that's like, I want to reap the harvest, but I don't want to do anything, right? Like, like I'll give you a church if you want that. Like, go there. Like, that's fine. I'm not picking on any churches. But, like, being a kingdom laborer, like, that elicits work. And, and again, please hear me. The work is praying. Like, I, I, we say it all the time, prayer is the work. Like, that's why I'm saying we're starting today. We're going to pray today, and we're going to watch today, and we're going to start living. And maybe this idea of living on mission is new. You're used to church being going to church. Uh, that's not what we believe in this place. The church is what goes. Um, we don't go to church. The church is what goes. Um, I mean, I look at you, and I still got to sit down and talk, because there's a whole list of people, right? Um, can I share just a piece of your story? I mean, there, there's so many stories here. Um, but Darren's sister-in-law moved up here because she was connected with me in Southern California, comes up here, gets connected Vintage Grace, and then her sister passes away, uh, Darren's wife. And so that's how Darren and I met, was being a part of his wife's funeral, June 25th. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and I met so many people. One of my favorite lines, I think I told you, my favorite line in his funeral was, I don't go to effing church, but, and it was in this room. <laughs> but if I went to effing church, I'd go to your effing church. And I'm like, sweet. Like, and I told that person. I'm like, okay. He's the one that was using that about me. I said, we're actually praying about launching a church in Foster. I mean, you know, we've prayed for this for a year. Um, and he's like, well, sign me up. I just don't know who he was. I didn't write his name down. So I'm like, ah. So I have to like look at all your friends. Be like, that's him. I remember. Um, we had a hat, I think. Anyways, but like there's so many people. We don't know who we're planting this church for. But let me be very direct. We're actually not planting the church for us. We're not. We're planting the church for people that actually don't want to go to church. Which is part of why guys like David or, 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 or Pastor Jim or the, the guys that I'm really connected with up, up the hill, Al, they're like, we want you here. Because there's lots of people in our backyards that aren't going to church. And if they were, they, they're they not going to go to ours. So we would love to have more kingdom neighbors to do this with. And that's exciting. I don't know how I got off on that, sorry. I ran this by my buddy at, at work, and I and he said, well, we already have so many churches in Glasgow, but why do we need another one? Yeah. And he kind of caught me off guard. How oh, did yeah. you answer that question? Well, I heard that a like, bunch. Like, I heard people like asking that I was praying about it. I was yeah. Like, how would you like us to answer it? I mean, because how do we differentiate and be respectful? Totally. So so here's the way I've been describing to people. And again, please hear me. Um, the only people that think that way are Christians, okay, first of all. And so <laughs> not to mention that, but we Christians have a long way to grow in our trusting and treasuring in Jesus. Um, but, but our heart had been to just to make much of Jesus, uh, to be the living proof of loving God. And as far as what we believe as a church is, we already have a church in Placerville. There's already 50 people that are, that are connected at Vintage that are living in Placerville. And so the church is already there. Now we're just going to start to gather. And that those 50 people are going to continue to live on mission. But I've heard from many of you how difficult it is. John, you and I have talked about this. You've been here for four years at Vintage. How it, it is difficult to invite people down the hill to go to church. <laughs> Um, they'll go down the hill for Costco, but they've already done that once that week, and they've already done the soccer practice another time that week. They don't want to do another time in church. And again, it's easier when we can, I, I use this kind of language, when we can own a Starbucks. Like, I want to own Totem for the gospel. <clears throat> Not I, Drew. Jacob's doing a great job owning Totem. I love it. Do it. But I want Totem to be a gospel presence. Um, now, the owners might not want that, the like mm -hmm. people that are there, but... And so that's the difference, is we're just trying to, to saturate a community, and that happens when you live in a community. Uh, you pray, watch, overlap when you live there together, when you're living on mission as a team. And so that's how I usually answer it. Honestly, and, and that's where I go, well, we've got 50 people that live there. Um, we're just now going to start to have a gathering at some point, when and where, I don't know. Uh, but at some point, um, we think there's a strategy to, to delay and launch until you have a critical mass. Um, but again, the Sunday morning is the easy part of church, honestly. Um, that, that's the easy part. That, that, that's the fun part. The hard part, the kingdom laboring, is Monday through Saturday. And that's what we need to start with. And so that's where I go. And again, anybody that is a kingdom guy or gal, they get it right away. They're like, oh, of course. Like, absolutely. Um, but let me be really honest. Many of us, and again, if you didn't hear the sermon last week, you'll help. But many of us are in the kingdom, but I don't think we're experiencing or exploring the kingdom. And so if you try to, like, argue with someone, don't go there. Um, because one of the things I say regularly to people is I love Jim Box. I met Jim years ago. So he's the senior pastor of Green Valley. You know, I got to meet Al Soto. Al Soto and I have texted a bunch. Like, Al's the real deal. He's over at Bayside Plaza Road. Um, and so I would be very quick. I don't like name droppers. They tick me off. But I'm sincere. I want Green Valley to explode. I want them to be, you know, to meet people with the love of Jesus and to be living. I mean, so there's not one church in Plaza Road I don't want to get bigger as a result of Vintage Grace Time. And so that's part of it diffuses a little bit of that. And they're like, why are you doing it? You know? Because we live here. <laughs> yeah, people like, have a competitive mentality. It right? is. Let's and it's killing the kingdom. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it breaks my heart. But but again, I want to be patient because we've all been there at one point or another. And so, um, yeah, so I just go to Common Ground. I go to the 11,000 people who live in the possible central city limits, right? And the amount of people who go to church, we're not even close. Like, we're not even at a tipping point. We're not even over that 16% tipping point. Um, and so we've got room to grow. So that's where I go. And I also am quick to say, but please hear our hearts. We love this church and this church and this church, and we're in relationship with them. We're not we're not bringing Jesus to foster. Yeah. Like, he's already there. <laughs> yeah. We're not competing with them. We're all on the same team. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And part of it, one of the best numbers here at, at, at Vintage Grace Central is that we've seen the, the kingdom participation go from 8.5% to 11% since we moved here four years ago. Um, that's really stinking cool. Um and we're, we're, like, honestly, of all the numbers, because we do keep track of numbers. They're not new. Again, churches get in trouble when they don't keep track of things. Like, 
what's your budget? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a good answer. I don't know a lot of things, but I do know those numbers. Like, we're supposed to be wise stewards. We're supposed to count costs. But the numbers of, of people that are dying in Placerville and not knowing and loving Jesus, those are unacceptable numbers. Um, and that's why we're connected to Placerville. So most Christians who truly love Jesus are not going to argue with you after you go through those three things. We already live there. We love the church of Placerville. We're just a part of it. Uh, that's what matters for us. And, oh, by the way, there's pre-believers that are preaching apart from Jesus. After I have that conversation, those are kind of my three talking points. Then they're like, cool, when do you start? You know? And then, of course, there's, oh, I want to go. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm telling you. I don't want you to go. That's not what I'm telling you. So I I got one more question I can take. Was that a hand or just a stretch? Scratch. <laughs> All right, steal third. That's the worst when you're a base coach. You guys have Little League in Placerville? I mean, i got to yeah. rethink everything. Like, yeah. Dang. Anyways, all right. So those are all questions that I think are actually prayer requests. Um, and so those are all things. Um, I'm afraid of horses. Um, I do love animals, though. I love cows and lobsters. Those are my favorite animals. Um, and so, uh, so if that'll preach, let me know. Um, I'll have to run my sermons by you guys as long as you before I ever give them. You're gonna have to get a gun and a diesel truck. I need a gun. My daughter's really cute. You get those two things, you'll be fine. And I have a truck, but it's not diesel. But. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to ruin my truck. Put a hole in the top of it. All right. So a couple quick Q&As that I think that you might have missed. Uh, where are we meeting? I don't know. Write that down. When are we meeting? We'll see. Who are we meeting with? And for, I'm glad you asked. Pull that Pray Watch card real quick. Because we're going to spend our last seven minutes, because um, I do believe in ending on time, uh, in spite of what my sermon might say. Um, but we're going to spend some time praying. And I just want you to pull out that prayer and watch this. This is a list for you. You're not turning this in. You're not, I slide in a book that I'm reading. I use it as a bookmark often. My prayer and watch is about 450 people. And so it, it's just a lot of people. It's a note my phone often. As I walk by, I see someone. I'm like, I'm just going to pray for that person. And I see him again. I see him again. I see him. I just keep praying. And part of what it does is it softens my heart to the people that God's put in my life that I miss because I'm in a hurry. My barista is more than just my barista. Um, again, I mean, how cool is this? John, can I share part of this story? Um, John's son is dating a gal that, again, she would call me her pastor. This is all confidential. Uh, she would call me her pastor, uh, but that's just because I live in Starbucks, and she was the manager at Starbucks. And she didn't have a pastor. And so when her dad died, and she needed a pastor to do the funeral, who did she call? It wasn't Ghostbusters, right? Like, it was, I'm going to go to my pastor. Um, I believe in the priesthood of all believers. You all are priests. You all are sent missionaries to be the laborer of the So when I say own a Starbucks, that's why it matters so much to me. Is, is for, for John's daughter-in-law, right? Like, for, for this gal that is hurting and needs hope, and she, she wants it, she knows it's there, and today, this is really cool, because she hasn't been back to vintage since the funeral, and that was three years ago, and the reason being is because the PTSD, because the funeral was here, we met at a middle school, and so we had to rent this space to use it for the funeral, and she says, I just can't come back. And PTSD is a real thing, and so today was the first day she came back to church in three years. Um, and so be praying, right? And so in this context of praying and watching, my point is this. You have no idea what's going on in your barista's life. You don't have a clue. But they don't exist to serve you a latte. When they mess it up, you can't be upset with them. Like these are either children of God or pre-believers. And in that context, still children of God. They just haven't understood their identity yet. And so um, I want us to be a praying community. If we want to see the Spirit of God work through us, it will be because he opens our eyes as we pray for people. So I want to just give you a minute right now at your seat to just start writing down people that God has put in your life. And 10 really shouldn't be enough. And maybe 10 is going to be hard right now, and that's okay. Um, I want to encourage you. There's people that are already there. They're already at the, the stores that you frequent. They're already in your neighborhood. They're already at your jobs. And, and now the call is, are we going to start praying for them? That the Lord of the harvest would turn them into a kingdom laborer. That, that he would reveal to them his love for them. And that he would use us as a conduit of that. So take a minute right now just to fill that out. And the word is we're going to pray. And I'm going to ask Casey, uh, why don't you guys, so let's just stay at our tables. Um, and uh, Stanley, do you mind joining this table right here? And uh, Enderman, did I, the Endermill, did I say that right? Do you mind just jumping up here at this table? Um, and then, yeah, you three want to gather up at this table. And then we're just going to have you guys just spread out a little bit. And we're just going to take some time to pray. And when we pray... Um, I think often as Christians, we spend lots of time sharing prayer requests and little time praying. And so we're just going to pray. Like literally, we're going to pray over the list that you're writing right now. And so we're going to go as tables and we're just going to pray over this list of names. We're going to say, Lord, you're the Lord of the harvest. Would you open this person's heart to you? And we're going to take the next three to five minutes and just pray for them. You can just say their names. 
You don't even have to, to share their contents. You can share something specific. But I want everyone at the table, if you're comfortable praying out loud, if you're not, you can just pray in, in your heart and pray with people. Um, amen means I agree. Um, I'm like, I'm a closet charismatic. I'm a deep Baptist uh, black preacher where I you know, got to, to my, my preaching training. And so amen means I agree. It's why, like, you got to talk to this audience participation point of the message. So if someone's praying, don't be afraid to say amen. Like, I agree. Lord, move in this person's heart. So let's just take some time right now, just as our tables, where we are, start praying to the Lord of the harvest for these people that God's put in our life. So I'll close this out in prayer. Go ahead and start, start praying with your teams.